Christ speaking to us. Let Christ be lifted up. Let self be crucified. Let the King of Kings be honored. Let the flesh be crucified. Open your, eye, your mouth your, and pray to the Lord and say, Lord, open my eyes today. I want to see wondrous things out of your word. Let God speak to us and mold us. Let him take us to the potter's house as a clay in his hands and chisel all that he needs to chisel out of us, all that he needs to prune and all that he needs to purge so that we'll leave this place perfected in the fullness of Christ. That we'll be able to join John the Baptist to pray this prayer that I will decrease and Christ will increase. And that will happen when self is crucified and Christ is all in all. One will pray that, Lord, touch me today. Touch me one more time. I need your touch so that my living in readiness for the coming of the Lord will be more like the master. Commit yourself to the Lord as we come before his table, that his word will flow from heaven, from the throne of grace, through this mortar instrument that God will use to bless us, that Christ alone will be glorified. And at the end, the word of God will mix with faith and grace in our hearts, and we will be doers and not hearers alone. Let's pray that at the end of the service, all that God wants to do in our lives, he will do it. And we'll come out shining and showing forth the praises of our Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our Father, once again, we thank you for bringing us before your throne of grace to give us the word of life and to purge and purify and crucify whatever will not allow the glory of God to be seen in us. Lord, we pray that as we come to the porter's house, you will touch us, you will mold us, and you will make us into the fashion, into your image, into your fullness, that we will be like Christ in all areas of our lives. And our motives will be to lift up Jesus and not to glorify self in Jesus' name. Pray that anywhere self has been dominating today, Father, through this supernatural breakthrough, let self be crucified. And let Christ be glorified in Jesus' name. Speak, Lord, for thy servants hear it. Take preeminence and let Christ alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Let's be seated. Uh, we have a message before us. My choir had already introduced us into the message, I'm crucified with Christ. And so we consider the message title, experiential crucifixion of self that means it's not just singing it it's not just hearing it it's not just preaching it we want to experience it experiential crucifixion of self that self will be crucified and we will have that personal experience that we are living to lift up jesus and Christ will be glorified in us in Jesus' name. Look at it. If you spell the word self vertically, S on this side, like students, when we're doing biology those days, they'll tell us, you know, uh, you put this word here and contrast it to get the opposite at the other side. Let's spell self in, in, in a way that will help us, self in the way that God doesn't want. And self that will also, you know, spell out what God will be glorified. And when we look at that, then we'll get a clear picture of where we are going. Let's open our Bibles to Romans chapter 8. Then we quickly do that before we continue. Romans chapter 8. And I read from verse 3. It said, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. And when you see the flesh, that is also talking about self. And so he said, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after what? After the flesh. But after what? The spirit. 
And in verse 5, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of what? Of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is what? Is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, that's the conclusion. So then, they that are in the flesh, that are walking in self-will, self-exhortation, self-projection, they that are of, of the flesh cannot do what? Cannot please God. So if you want to please God, you should allow self to be what? Crucified. So that Christ will be glorified. Let's spell that self vertically. Then you appreciate what I'm saying. Look at the other side. Self-glory. S for selfishness. Those who are seeking their own glory, they are selfish. Everything is about them. They don't talk about the Savior. They don't talk about other people's good. All is self. So the S there on the side of self, those who are in self, walking in the flesh, walking in self, S is selfishness. The E is exhortation of self. They exhort themselves instead of exhorting Christ. Then the L is lost. They have something within, which you call lost of the flesh. The lost of the flesh will always seek to, you know, project itself. And that is the L of that self that is not of God. Then the F is flesh, the flesh itself. The fleshly glory that will want to glorify himself. We want his flesh to be, you know, seen in a way of projecting self. So we can see that that is self-glory. But when you yield yourself to God, it is at the other side, the right-hand side, which is yourself in God, you in God, the hope of what? You in Christ, Christ in you, the hope of what? The hope of glory. That means when you are buried with Christ, when self is crucified, when you are in Christ and Christ is in you, when all that you think about, all that you desire in life is to lift up Jesus. Jesus promised and he said, if I be lifted up, I will do what? I will draw all men unto myself. Can we come to a point that we say this year is a year of exalting Christ? And anything we do at the back of our mind, the motive, and all that, the zeal, the passion, the preaching, the prayer, everything we do, the singing, everything is to lift up who? Christ. And if Christ be lifted up, he will draw men unto himself. I remember those days when we were organized programs. And it's like nobody is coming for the program. And then you have to say, this program is meant to lift up what? Lift up Christ. And as, you are, as the motive is to lift up Christ, and you are just praying, and you are just praying, before you know, one person will show up. And then you said, it's working. Then as you keep on praying, the motive of this program is to lift up Jesus. The second person will come, and before you know, everyone will be filled up. If we have the right motive, God's work done in God's way, done with a pure motive, will not lack God's approval. Amen? And that's why we come to the other side. This is self in Christ. You have yielded yourself to Christ. Number one, the S there is sincerity. You, everything is done with sincerity. It's done with a sanctified heart. It's done with the Savior as the motive behind the action. Then the E is empty of self. Self is dead. You are empty, totally of self. Self is no more the one detecting. Self is no more talking. Self doesn't have any preeminence in your life. Empty of self. So everything you do is for God's glory. Amen. Then the L there is the love of God. Everything you do, you do it out of pure love. You do it as not with lust, you know. These are days that young people are looking here and there. Who am I going to, you know, get the will of God to? And then, you know, instead of defining your love, it's rather lust. 
and then you want to say, ah, I remember we are, uh, is, tomorrow is his birthday. And then you buy a gift and say, bro, uh, it's just to identify that you are, but there is another thing so that you will not forget that we are already pouring cold water. But when the love of God is there, you won't even want the person to know you are the one giving him that thing. Be because it's an opposite sex, because you want that person to also love God that this is God's provision. All you do is to get a sister like that sister and package it and then give it to sister, please, I don't want to directly give it to this sister. So that she will appreciate it that this is God's provision. Kindly help me give her and tell her it's the Lord's provision. You did it as unto the Lord and you'll be rewarded by God. But, you know, these are the days, blow your trumpet so that she will know at least you have been, you know, showing some love, but the love is having ulterior motive. So that by the time you appear and said, we love God, I remember. But the dowry has been paid almost 50% by being paid gradually. And now it's only 50% that is remaining. That is insincerity. That is fleshly. That is self. Self, you know, you are selling yourself gradually. Let's do things as unto the Lord. When we do things as unto the Lord, the Lord will reward us openly in Jesus' name. And then the F in the self that is in Christ is full of Christ's glory. Everything you do is full of what? The glory. You seek the glory of God. You are not seeking your own glory. And as you seek God's glory, the Lord will inhabit our praises and he will bless us more in Jesus' name. So having spelled out the self, now look at where you belong. If your own self is on the self side of self-glory, you switch to the, the side of God. Amen. And then when you come to the side of God, you are sincere with whatever you do. You do it as unto the Lord. You do it without looking for self-glory. You do it not projecting or publicizing yourself, but you want Christ to be known. You want Christ to be lifted up. You move to the other side of God, which is empty of self. And everything you do, you do it out of pure love. You do it with the back background that Christ alone will be what? Will be exalted. And I pray the Lord will do it in us in Jesus' name. Experiential crucifixion of self. Self will be crucified today in Jesus' name. And you leave this place with the fullness of Christ. The Lord of hosts will perform this as we've come to his presence. He will perfect it in our lives in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 6 verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is what? Is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve what? Sin. For he that is dead is free from what? From sin. And in Galatians chapter 2, Galatians chapter 2, let's read verse 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That is something we should know. We should know this, that God wants the old man in us to die. He wants self to be crucified so that we will live for God's glory, and the Lord will do it in our hearts in Jesus' name. Enough of, you know, covering up, and you just come, you do some activities, but you know at the back of your mind, you are projecting self. You are not representing the interests of the kingdom of God. As such, God doesn't want us to continue, you know, to subdue self and continue to, you know, cover it up. God wants self to be surrendered, to be crucified. Surrender that self-will. Surrender that self-interest. Surrender that self-centeredness. Surrender that self, you know, projection. And let God crucify self so that Christ alone will be exalted. And if Christ be lifted up, he's faithful. He said he will draw what? All men unto himself. And the Lord will do it in Jesus' name. This is the personal experience that Paul, the apostle, possessed in his time. That I will be crucified. Look at it again in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. 
I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, what? Not I. That means whatever you are doing, not I. That I will decrease and Christ will do what? Will increase. When you are preaching, you don't come here to tell us your story. Because we want to hear whom? Christ. The, 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 the people in the Bible, they said, Elder, we want to see who? We want to see Jesus. And that is our, 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 our desire. When we come to the church, we want to see Christ. We've been seeing, it's better after you've preached, give us time to view whom you are outside the preaching. Because on the pulpit, everybody is an angel. On the pew, on Sunday, everybody is an angel. But the moment we leave the church, then we'll see the real me, the I, myself. That self will project out. And that's why when we come here, we lift up Jesus. So that when we go, Christ in us, the hope of glory will be reproduced in us. And others will see Christ in us in Jesus' name. And so we have to surrender the self today. And that self will be crucified, purged, and perfected for God's glory in Jesus' name. If self is not crucified, our spiritual lives will not be pleasing unto God. And that's where we read in Romans chapter 8, uh, Romans chapter 8 again, in verse 8. It says, so then, they that are in what? In the flesh. We we'll walk in self, self-will, self-projection, self everything about self, it says they cannot do what? Please God. And if your life is not pleasing to God, where do you want to spend eternity? I pray the Lord will speak to us and he will perfect his work in us in Jesus' name. We'll consider three points before we pray. Number one, the perverseness and contamination by self. The perverseness and contamination by self. That means there is something self is doing is destroying something that God wants us to examine ourselves and allow him to purge and purify, prune and perfect us in his fullness. Number two, we consider the purging and the crucifixion of self. The purging and the crucifixion of self. And then we'll run it up with the power of conquerors over self. The power of conquerors over self. Today, you will conquer self in Jesus' name. You know, we talk about supernatural breakthrough. Supernatural breakthrough is not only for the external. Our inner man must also have that liberation. Our inner man must also have that emancipation. Our inner man must also have that divine transformation. So much that after this one month's prayer and fasting, when we look at us as individually, we said God has taken us to the potter's house. And he has done a supernatural breakthrough in our spiritual lives. And the inner man is transformed, if you can use any alliteration, translated from the old life of self into a new life of showing for the praises of God. And then let that be a, a sudden change. That sudden change is what we call transmogrification. That means God touches you suddenly and take you from where you are and take you to where he wants you to be. And then your life has what we call a testimony. I pray everything that self has done in our life today, the Lord is going to purge them out and purify us and will come transformed in Jesus' name. We'll go to point number one, the perverseness and contamination by self. Look at Job chapter 9 verse 20. Job chapter 9. Let's quickly read verse 20 together and see what God has to tell us about what self, the damage that self has done to our spiritual lives so that we can come to the Lord and say, Father, today I surrender myself. Perfect what you need to perfect in my life. In Job chapter 9, we read verse 20. It says, if I justify myself, my own mouth will do what? Shall condemn me. If I say I am what? I am perfect. It shall also prove me what? Perverse. That is self-examination. 
what has self done you know in your life that god wants you to examine and come back to where he wants you to be and so today is no idea of justifying ourselves like that you know publican and then the other man that went to the temple and said lord you know i'm a perfect man i fast every day i even these 31 days i've not missed anyone i'm so perfect i, I look at this publican this one that is just you know, it, this, today is not a day of co self comparison. Today is not a day of carnal comparison. Today is not a day I'm better than him, or I'm, I'm better than her, or whatever, or she's better than myself. Or I'm be today is the day of saying, if I justify myself, my own mouth shall do what? Condemn me. And if I say I am perfect, it shall also prove me perverse. And so God wants us to humble ourselves so that he can take us to the potter's house and perfect us. And by the time we come out of this service, we will not remain the same in Jesus' name. In Isaiah chapter 44, Isaiah 44, verse 20. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 20. He feedeth on ashes. A deceived heart had turned him aside, that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, is there not a lie in my right hand? That's the question. So this is not a day that you have to deceive your, just open up to him. He knows us. He knows everything about you. You know, when you, you go to a, an office or to the bank, and you feel you are doing something they don't know, there are cameras all over. And the manager is inside viewing you, even right from the parking lot when you park your car. The manager inside is viewing everything about you. When you get to the entrance, the way you entered, the, the shirt you are wearing, your face, and your plan, whatever is in your pocket, they have already x-rayed everything. And that's why these days when you get to the bank and you are using your phone, they don't even bother to say switch off your phone. They, they don't even bother because they've seen all about you. And if man, a mortal man, can devise something that can x-ray your, 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 your coming in and going out, what do we think of God Almighty? The Bible says the eyes of the Lord run it what? To and fro, beholding. And so he knows us within and without. He knows what you are doing inside the house. He knows what you are doing outside. He knows even your motive as you are seated, listening to the message. is extreme your motive and he knows everything. And so there is nothing we can hide from him. And so he says, he feedeth on ashes. A deceived heart had torn him aside. You will, we will not deceive ourselves today. Will open up to him and he will work upon us in Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, the Bible will spell it out because it says the word of God is sharper than two double edged swords and it pierces through. That is the word that will x ray our hearts to us. The, the, the stories of men will not go anywhere, it will end where the man ends. But the word of God will pierce into the, our heart. It's the designer of the heart, of the intent of a man. It's like an x ray machine that exposes and reveals ourselves to us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, let's look at what the Bible is telling us so that we can yield ourselves and allow God to work upon us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, I read verse 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not what? And not why. So this is no idea of comparing yourself. But I'm better than um, I, I'll at least God. God can score me eighty percent. God wants hundred percent. Amen. And so we are the ones to come before the Lord and said, "What has self done? You know the perverseness, and how has self, you know, contaminated and polluted my life?" And then you yield yourself and say, "Lord." Purge me. And as we yield ourselves to the Lord, the Lord will do it in Jesus' name. I hope you have your pen and you have your book. You're going to write. You know, we have 22 doctrines of the Bible in deeper life, isn't it? Yes. Today you are going to write 22 manifestations of self. 
so that at any time you'll be able to remember that, oh, this is self. I have to submit myself to God and crucify self. So how is self? How does self produce himself in us? Let's look at number one, self-absorption. Self-absorption. That means absorb of self, whatever they do, they do it because they absorb by self, just self and self. Number two, self-centered. Always looking for self-advantage, self-honor, self-centered. Number three, self-interest. Only interested in things that will bring profit to them, not considering the profit of other people. Number four, self preoccupied everything everything about is just occupied with self nothing about spiritual things number five self-seeking seeking for advantage in the house of god and eh, what if i'm usher are they going to pay me for one hour or pay me for the three hours of standing if i'm in the counting room are they going to pay me something after staying after hours and this is self-seeking. But when you seek God's reward, God is not unrighteous to forget our labor of love. Amen. He will reward our faithfulness. They do all for self, and they even shield others who will do better than themselves because they don't want any other person to do it for them to say, ah, he's doing it better than myself. Or even if somebody is doing it, they want that person to make mistake or that person to fall. That is carnality. So that I can take over, let him fall. That is not of God. And if you are among those people who pray so dangerous prayer, fall and die so that I can take over, that is not of God. It's evil. That is self-seeking. Seeking your own things alone. And the Bible says, love does not seek its own alone. It seeketh the good of other people. That is love of God. Number six, self-serving. All their labors is just for exhortation of self, serving themselves. Food, only for myself. Salary, only even to pay tithe and offering. It's becoming difficult for some believers because the whole money is for myself. I cannot give God one tenth of it. And so everything is self-serving. Even, you know, when you have something that others are in need, Close your eyes to them. America is only you, your family. Every other person is a stranger. And so, self-serving. We serve ourselves alone. And that is not of God. Self, seven, number seven, self-admiration. Just to look at their faces, work that they have done, never stopping talking about it so that other people can admire what they have achieved. Let Christ be glorified. Amen. And I like this song in, the, in our GHS that to God be what? All the glory. Everything, let the glory be, be to God. And when you exhort God, God will do more for you in Jesus' name. Number eight, self-glory. Glorifying, glorying in self. If there's anything you want to glory about, glory about Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. And that you are crucified. Number nine, self-satisfaction. All right with themselves. I'm satisfied. I am satisfied. I don't need any word of God so I can even sleep. And self is demanding sleep. And you give it sleep when the word of God is going on. That is self-satisfaction. I mean, it's enough. I've had enough in the morning about, you know, a family and forgiveness. So this one I can sleep. The house of God is not a place of sleeping. It's dangerous to sleep in the house of God because devil will make you to hear a half, what we call, a half of the truth. And then you will go home with emptiness. What happened? There was a preacher who was preaching and he discovered that some people were sleeping while he was preaching about a hot message. And then he lowered his voice at the first point and then increased his voice at the second one. He says, if you want to go to hell, Rise up. And the people who were sleeping did not hear the first part of what? If you want to go to hell. Rather, they had what? Rise up. And you know, people like that, when they are sleeping, they will do as if they are not. And it's dangerous when you have glasses. If you are sleeping, they will know you are sleeping. 
And suddenly, you know, those who are not conscious of the first part, what would they do? They will rise up. And then they will discover, ah, ah, everybody's not rising up. What is happening? Then they will get the message that it's not good to sleep when you are in church. Pay attention. Be active. So if you are writing this 22, you should not be sleeping. Amen? I did that to wake up those who are already allowing self to go into self-satisfaction. You will not be satisfied until you are filled with the fullness of Christ in Jesus' name. And then we continue. Number 10, self-conceit. Self-conceit. Pride in self. Even when you can see their faults, errors, and even that they've gone astray, but because they are so full of self, self-conceit, Everything is all right in their own sight. Say, please leave me alone. This is just me. That's how I'm brought up. That's the way I live my life. Don't, 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 don't even bother to call my attention to what I should put right. Sister, look at this area. Brother, look at this area. Just leave me alone. That's self -con They are just, you know, they're full of themselves. They don't want to take correction. And number 11, self-assertion. To assert and protect themselves, protect themselves. Never humble enough to say, I am sorry. That word sorry is a strange word in their lips. Because they are so full of themselves. But to humble themselves and say, my wife, I am sorry. My husband, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. That word, I'm sorry, that some people don't want to release, have spoiled and scattered and broken a lot of homes. The word sorry can bring you together and that same word sorry that you cannot release can break your home. I pray God will bring us back to the ancient lifestyle of being humble enough to acknowledge, to admit when you are at fault and to humbly say, I am sorry. And when you are sorry, mean the sorry because God knows the motive behind the sorry. Sorry. And eh, sorry, there are two different stories. And eh, sorry, so that you can just keep quiet, leave me alone. Eh, is it sorry you want? Take, I am sorry. So you should know all those. The motive behind the sorry is what God is looking at. And so it's not just to say, I'm sorry. When you mean sorry, God knows. I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to. Yes, eh, is, this, is this sorry you want to eat? Take sorry and go. That is not of God. Amen? And so let's mind the motive behind our actions. Self-assertion. Then the next one, number 12, self-confidence. Yes, it's good at times. Children, we tell you, be, be, be courageous. And build up your courage and know that God, I can do all things through who? Through Christ that strengthens me. But the self-confidence is the one Peter demonstrated. When Jesus was saying tonight, hmm, when the enemy comes to take me, all of you will do what? Will deny me, will betray me. Instead of Peter said, Lord, pray for us. Peter said what? <laughs> Lord, <laughs> if anyone will deny you, not me. And when it came to pass, when he heard the cock crow, he remembered, said he told us. Self-confidence would not want to pray when others are praying. Youths, don't think your parents have everything. They have the money, they have the cars, they have everything. And when we said pray, you to be using their phone in the church and be browsing. So why would I need to pray? Why would I need to cry unto God? My parents are there. Whatever I need, they have to provide it. If they fail to provide it, it's America. I will press 999. They will carry my parents and say, they are abusing us. But remember, that father is not going to be forever and ever. You're also going to live by yourself one day. And so you should learn to pray because it's through prayer we get, you know, breakthrough. It's through prayer we are able to get our request. It's God that provided for your parent, that is providing for your parent, that they're able to meet your need. So when you also pray, God will do more for your parents. You also enjoy that, you know, that habit of going to God. So we should avoid self-confidence like Peter. We should watch and pray. We should not be careless. Self-confidence. Brother, you are not yet married. And this is a sister coming to visit you by 11 p.m. And the sister is coming alone. She didn't come with her best friend. As the Bible says, two are better than what? 
than one. You tell the sister, sister, I'm sorry, can you just send me a message? We'll meet at church. After church, we'll see in church. That is holiness. But brothers, uh, I know uh, God is faithful and his grace is sufficient for me. You will know that this flesh is not born again. If you yield yourself as instrument of sin, self will yield to sin. And when you fall, that's when your eyes will be opened. I didn't know that this is how people fall. And that's why you should not be self-confident. You should trust in the Lord. Watch and do what? And pray. As you are praying, be watching. Because the devil, as our adversary, the Bible says, is like a rallying lion going about looking for whom you do what? He will devour. He will not get us in Jesus' name. And in any way we have been careless before, let's wake up and watch and do what? And pray. And will not fall in Jesus' name. Number 13, self-flattery. Flattering of self. Keep on talking about themselves. Flattering themselves. Not even giving us rest. Every time is themselves, themselves. Talk about Jesus. I like this song in the choir. Let's talk about Jesus. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the Lord of Lords. Let's talk about Jesus. And when you talk about Jesus, somebody there will be convicted. So I know Jesus because Jesus is the one who died for me. I know Jesus because he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and of heaven laden, and I will do what? I will give you rest. Time will fail me to even run through the ABCD of Jesus because it's just what God can do. That is the ancient of days that can console you, that can take you. Say, when my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will do what? He will take me up. And he has not changed. He's the Alpha and what? And the Omega. Talk about Jesus. Let's, let's, let's lift up Jesus. If we lift him up, he will draw all men unto what? Unto himself. We should not, we should not flatter people. We should not be projecting ourselves. Let's exhort him. If you go to letter B of Christ, you will see him as our banner. As our battle winner. And more of, most of us are fighting a lot of battles. So the, the battles I fought might not be the same battle you are going to fight. But when we link ourselves to Christ, he is the one that will fight individuals' battles for them. Some people compare themselves. That's why we miss it. We say, this sister did this. I will also do the same thing she did. And you, you will just be there hanging in the valley. No solution. Because you want to be like someone instead of being like Christ. And when we look unto Jesus, he has even given us the formula. He says, looking unto Jesus, the what? The author and the what? And the finisher. That means if you want to finish a project, look unto Christ. Get the formula from Christ. Get the key from Christ, not from men. Because the Bible told us the arm of flesh will do what? Will fail us. Even said, vain is the help of man, but God will never fail you. Amen. And if you go to letter C, he's the conqueror. He will conquer all your battles for you. I've not forgotten my 22. I just pause because when you get absorbed into the fullness of Christ, you must lift up that Christ. Amen. For someone to know that the solution that we need is in Christ and is the deliverer. Whatever bondage, whatever yoke, just come to him, he will deliver you. He's the everlasting father. And no matter your child, maybe you are motherless, you are fatherless, when you hook up with Christ, connect with Christ, he will take care of you. And he's the fairest of 10,000. These are the days that people are looking for the fairest lady. There's no fairest lady in this world. That lady, give him up to 70. Everything that was uh, shining will go inside. And that's why Jesus will never fail. Amen? And when you go further, you see him as the greatest physician. Do you have any sickness? When you look unto Jesus, look unto me and ye be and be healed, O ye land. Christ will heal you. And he the home builder. Is your home having challenges? Let Christ be in the center of your home. Amen. He's the home builder. He will build your home. On this rock, I build my church. I build my family. I build my home. On Christ, the solid rock. And, on, and when your home is built on Christ as the center of my home, he says the gates of hell cannot do what? Cannot prevail again. Let them fashion any weapon they are fashioning. Some of us are even exhorting devil and evil spirits more than Christ. We are afraid as if the Christ, Christ that is you are in is somebody that Satan can just come and pull you out of him. See what the Bible says? He said, we are seated where? In heavenly places. In who? 
in Christ Jesus. And so let's exalt Christ as the powerful one. And then all those forces they know, greater is he that is what? Is in us. That who? That he that is in the world. And so you have nothing to fear. And when I go on, time will fail me. And you go to letter J. Who, who is that? Jesus. And you go to I, I, uh, no, I left I, Emmanuel, God with us, and J, Jesus. And then you go to the King of Kings, you go to the Lord of Lords, you go to the man of Galilee who can meet you at the point of your need. And then uh, uh, is your spiritual life dry? He's the nourisher of our soul. And you go on to omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. Then you go to the powerful one who has power. Beside the power of Jesus, the Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall do what? Shall bow. Yeah, we have to exalt Christ so that self will be crucified and Christ will be glorified. And when you go further, you see him as the quickener of our soul. You see him as the resurrection and life. Look at Lazarus. Lazarus was dead for four days. But when Jesus came there, didn't Lazarus, he, he, he told Lazarus, come forth. And whatever is dead in your life, when we lift up Jesus, he will bring it back to life in Jesus' name. And he's the Savior. He's the truth. And he is the universal gospel. He's the word of God. He's the wisdom of God. He's the x-ray physician. of. He knows everything about us. There's nothing we can hide from Christ. And he's the yoke breaker. And this month of supernatural breakthrough, every yoke in this church will be broken in Jesus' name. And the zeal is the zealous Lord. And he will make his work to be performed in our life. So when we exhort Christ and we don't flatter, you know, try to exhort ourselves, use our own story, achievement, but lifting up Christ, the Lord will be glorified in our church in Jesus' name. Number 14, self-gratification. Just to gratify self and do all to bring good feelings for ourselves. Let Christ be glorified. Let's, number 15, self-indulgence. Number uh, 16, self-opinionated. That means everything is about our own opinion. If they don't do it the way I'm suggesting, everything must scatter. Everything must just like, if you don't take my advice, then we will not go from here. That means we just want to dominate. We don't want other people's view to come in. And this is what affects our team spirit, teamwork. By the time husband and wife are discussing, my wife, let's do it this way. Okay, today you can have your way. Then another time, wife suggests, no, it must always be me. I'm the head. And that breaks homes. That affects unity in the family. I pray God will help us to subject ourselves to Christ's will in Jesus' name. Number 17, it says self-sufficient. We are, we just, I'm just sufficient. I don't need, I'm fine. I'm fine. Somebody needs help. And you want to help him, I'm fine. Just like the good Samaritan. If that man that was affected on the way did not surrender himself to say, I need help. I'm bruised. I'm wounded. I need help. And there are a lot of people in the church, spiritually, we are wounded. Spiritually, there are a lot of bruises. Devil has, you know, broken some people's spiritual backbones. Open up. I need help. Come to the pastors. Pastors, I need prayer. Amen. Let's do it on time. Prevention is better than cure. Don't die in silence. Don't die prematurely. Open up and you'll be helped. Amen. And so self-sufficient is, I'm fine. Everything is okay. We were in the country in Botswana for almost 10 years. This is a country that everything on the surface is okay. But inwardly, if they open up to you, you know that a lot of things are going on on the ground. But when you greet somebody, it's okay, it's okay. But yeah, they change. When we came here, we had another version of that. Like, I'm fine, I'm fine. But it's not all fine. Let's open it up. So that Christ will refine us in Jesus' name. And then number 18, is it number 18, I mean? Okay, self-defense. This is the one that is causing a lot of, you know, problems at home. Self-defense. Hey, children, who touched this thing? Huh? It, it's, it, she's the one. And no, I'm not the one. She's the one. Self-defense. 
because they know that the next thing will be what? Punishment. But at, we have learned about love. Let's teach our children to fear God more than fearing us so that they can also go to heaven. If you threaten a child and the child tells lies and goes and the child ends up in hell, what has it profited us for bringing a child up in the, in the faith and at the end we are the same person that made this child to lie or to, you know, to go to hell because of self-defense. And even wives also. In order not to be seen as every time I'm the one at the end of, you know, saying sorry, then the wife too also want to do what? <laughs> Self-defense. Uh, uh, you too, the other time, the other time. All the ones that have, we've forgotten before, we now bring it up so that we will not feel guilty. That is to say we should go back to Calvary. Kneel all the offenses on the cross. So that any time you want to remember the other time, you said, ah, but we have agreed that anything that has passed has been kneeled on the what? On the cross. And so we should not remember it. And I pray God will help us, will not defend self, but will surrender and say sorry when necessary. Number 19, self-affirmation. Number 20, self-will. Self-will is very dangerous. For those who are looking for God's will in marriage, you must allow self to be crucified. Otherwise, I remember those days when we were counseling students on campus as campus pastors. This sister saw the will of uh, the brother saw a will of God to the sister, and the brother did all that he needed to do. Went through the marriage committee, did all the blood tests, and the marriage committee clarified. And then go and see the sister, and go to the sister, sister. By the grace of God, I've prayed, and the Lord is leading me to you. Okay, give me time to pray. Brother humbled himself, waiting for answer. Before you know, the devil started, self-will. What is hindering you, sister? We have not heard from you. Ah, uh, you know, the shape of the head of the brother. It looks like a solo mango. It's not round. So, now marriage is now the shape of the head. When the Bible says the husband is the head, it's not talking about the physical head. Eh? It's having impact. Amen? And that hind hindered the sister from yielding to the will of God. But after some counseling, the Lord broke that barrier. Imagine, the shape of the head would have hindered God's will. And today, the sister surrendered and they got married. And this same brother with... Uh, Solo Mango is the one that brought the sister to America. Today, they are happily married with kids, and the sister is fulfilled. That means self-will must be crucified so that you can do the will of God. Amen. And then number 21, self-righteousness. All our self-righteousness, they are like what? Feel the rag. And the last one is self-comparison. We should not be comparing ourselves with ourselves. You know, when you go to some countries, you hear a sound of a generator that is very solemn. Then you had another generator that is making noise. And then somebody will be proud that my generator is better than yours. Are they not all producing electricity? Are they not all helping us to see what we are seeing? So there should not be room for carnal comparison. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Point number two, the purging and the crucifixion of self. This is the time to surrender. Let the Lord purge you. Amen. In Psalm 51, let's open. This is a popular verse. And that is where God dealt with David. And he will deal with us and mold us in Jesus' name. In Psalm 51, let's read together from verse 6 to verse 13. Behold, thou desired truth in the inward part. That is the motive behind what we do. Thou desirest the truth in the inward parts. You know, when you are speaking, let's know that what you are speaking out is exactly what is inside you. Amen. That is sincerity. And so it says, I read again, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Verse 7, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may do what? May rejoice. 
Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me what? A clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. The Lord will do it in our hearts in Jesus' name. And let's open our Bible again to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. And see the crucifixion of the self. How we need to allow God to purge and purify and cleanse the self so that we'll come out refined, renewed, and perfected for God's glory. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I read verse 27. It says, But I keep under my body and bring it into what? Subjection. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to what? Others. I myself should be what? It's not enough to be given opportunity to preach. But after you've preached, so that you will not be a castaway, you yourself, you need to go and read the message to yourself. And pray it in and say, Lord, wherever self has been, you know, projecting itself in me, wherever self has contaminated your glory in me, I yield myself, purge me also. And I pray the Lord will do it in every heart in Jesus' name. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, we read it, we'll read it again. Because we're talking about purging and crucifixion. And the Lord will do it. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And I pray if Christ can give all himself for us, we'll also be able to give ourselves away and allow him to have his way in us in Jesus' name. The Lord needs to take away and destroy self in us. That is why the Lord came, not just to save us. We are saved, born again, but God needs to take away self-will and cut off all the branches of self-projection. Now we need to, he needs to deal with the roots. The root of self has to be uprooted. That is the Adamic nature. That propensity to project ourselves. And if we do that and allow God to work on us, we'll come out refined, transformed, and renewed in Jesus' name. The resolve, the old man, and carnality, which needs to be purged in our inner part. That's why it says, thou desire the truth. In what? In the inner world, inner part. And I pray the Lord will do it in Jesus' name. David was being eaten up by self internally. He has trained himself to do activities outwardly. And yet the bones have been broken internally. Is it not what is happening? That we come to do some outward activities, but inwardly things are not right. Only himself knew that. Uh, he has lost the joy of serving the Lord. You can do all those activities, and that can lead to your destruction. So that's what the Bible says. On that day, many people will come to me, Lord, Lord, is it not in your name we prophesy? Is it not in the name we did this and did? I said, I never knew you depart from me. You what? You workers of iniquity. So it's not enough to do activities. So we should not be carried away. And say, if they don't allow me to dance and do activity, I will leave their church for them. Where, where else will you go? Where will I go? Peter said, to whom shall we go? Thou art the only one who has the word of internal life. There's nowhere we can go. So if dancing is suspended, then vibrate spiritually. Let that dancing take place in prayer. Amen. Let your soul be dancing and say, Lord, all to Jesus I surrender. And the Lord will keep us. We will not go back because of fleshly uh, uh, pleasure in Jesus' name. And so we may know about salvation by preaching to others. But personal experience requires that we become sincere with ourselves. We should visit Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane. 
lest I forget Calvary, lest I forget what the Lord has done on the cross, dying for me, dying on the cross. I pray the Lord will help us today. We will empty ourselves of self and we will allow the Lord to conquer and purge us in Jesus' name. And so there comes a time in a Christian life that this self is crucified, totally, you know, crushed and we are conquered and we become conquered seven. How do we know this? Number one, you will see yourself confronting yourself, self-confrontation. Myself, don't misbehave. You talk to yourself, and you look at yourself and say, today you must behave. Amen. And that means you, want, you are conscious that I don't have to allow self to dominate me. So you check your motive. And then number two, self-analysis. Before you leave your house, you look at yourself in the mirror. Uh, uh, they must not see this. I must cover it. So all those V-shape, we turn them to what? Round neck. Amen? So that you don't come here and show us what we should not see. And so there must be self-analysis, self-check. Check your inner mind. What's your motive of putting on that cloth? Is it to project yourself or to lift up Jesus? So you check up yourself so that whatever you do will be to God's glory. And then self-examination. Examine yourself, whether you are in the faith. Except you are what? Reprobate. I pray the Lord will help us. We examine ourselves in Jesus' name. Then number four, self-reflection. That you see to reflect and think back and think true on all that you do for the day. And you ask yourself, did I glorify God or I glorified myself? Did I lift up Jesus today? Let others see Jesus in you. Why passing through this world of sin? Others, your life. Some people, when they are leaving the house, say, today I'm dressing to kill. Kill those men that their eyes cannot face where they are going. But you as a child of God, you dress to lift up Jesus. Let others see what? Jesus in me. Your motive matters. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Number five, self-denier. You're able to deny self. You are able to deny self. The Bible says, if meat will make my brother to fall, I better don't what? It's the meat. Self-denial. There's nothing wrong about eating meat. There's nothing wrong about wearing clothes. But if this cloth will make my brother to fall, I better don't wear it. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. These are days some of us, we don't even pray to go for shopping. We just go to anything, our eyes find, we just pick it. Everybody is buying it, I must also buy it. But you should have the right motive. Your life must please God. Number six, self-discipline. You don't just talk anyhow. You don't just open your mouth, whatever comes into your mouth. You don't embarrass people. You speak as with, you know, you speak as somebody that has the grace of God. Self-discipline. And whatever cannot help other that will not edify, you don't go, when you speak or talk or you demonstrate, whatever you do, you discipline your number seven, self-sacrifice. Not looking for easy way out, but the way of the cross. The way of the cross leads home. I must need go home by the way of the cross. There's no other way but this. I pray the Lord will help us. We'll carry our cross. Whatever we need to sacrifice, we'll sacrifice in Jesus' name. Number eight, self-forgetfulness. Forget yourself and let Christ be glorified. Amen. Let's seek the honor of the Lord. Let pride not come in. Forget about yourself and yield yourself to glorify God. Number nine, self-report. That means go back to God every time to report yourself to God. God, this is what I've done. Did I do it well? Oh, I mess up. Is there any way I need to polish up? Lord, help me. Amen. You know, these are the days some of us, immediately we finish the service, hey, did you record me? I want to see myself the way I was doing. Yeah, that is not. You go to God and say, God, I've come back to you. Those are the days. After you've preached, you have sung, you go on your knees and pray. Say, Lord, this thing I've done, is it part of me or I need more? And you pray it in. It's not to see yourself, but let God see you report to God. Number 10, self scrutinizing. That self-importance is no more there. You look for God's glory. Let's go to the last point. My time is gone. The power of conquerors over self. We'll spell power vertically and then we'll pray. P, pattern of absolute surrender. Pattern of absolute surrender. The power of conquerors over self. When you follow the pattern of Christ, the pattern of absolute surrender, 
demonstrated by Christ's example. Look at it in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. That's how to have power over self. Why Jesus gave us the example. Look at it. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Or let's even start from verse 3. It says, Let nothing be done through what? Strive or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than what? Themselves. That's how we can overcome self. See other people that they can do it better than you. And if they are there, be joining them in prayers. Don't say, eh, hey, they thought they can do it without me. They will make mistake. And while they are singing, ah, this sister, she will go off key. Then they will know that any time I'm not there, nothing will be done. That is self. Eh, who gave him microphone to preach to us today? He will miss one verse of the Bible. She, he will not miss it. We join in prayers. We are one body. Amen. And when we work together, the church of God will move forward in Jesus' name. Look at verse 5. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on what? On the things of others. Verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in who? In Christ Jesus. Who? Being in the form of God. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of what? No reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he did what? He humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the Christ uh, of the cross. And after that humility, there was a great honor. God honored him. Look at verse nine. Wherefore God also had exalted, highly exalted him. And giving him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is what is Lord to what to the glory of God the Father. So the P is pattern of absolute surrender. Surrender your will and let the will of God be done. Amen. No more self-exhortation, but a conquered servant. Voluntarily humbled yourself and God will honor you in Jesus' name. The O in the power, obedience of an approved soldier. Obedience, obedience. Obedience brings a blessing. Obedience to the prompting of the Spirit and the teaching of the Word of God. This must be the pattern and the priority of your life. Obedience may bring hardship sometimes, suffering, but stick to Christ's way of doing things. And as you do, Christ will be pleased and you'll be glorified and you will be blessed in Jesus' name. I remember those days when we were on campus, one of the sisters were told to lead choruses and she has dressed up from home. And she got to the church, and the pastor said, sorry, you cannot use this to lead choruses. The sister had to rush back to the hostel to go and change before they finished the, you know, pre-prayer. She had already changed and come back. Will you be able to do that? Said, if they don't want me, yes, they should take their thing and let somebody else do it. Humility will bring great honor in your life. And that is the type of life God, obedience. And so the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. You cannot please the Lord without displacing those who don't know the Lord. Who are your friends that gives you advice? They teach you not to obey the word of God because you feel they are taking things too far. But it's better. If our righteousness does not exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, the Bible says what? We cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And so don't allow people outside to be influencing you against the truths that we are being taught here. If you walk according to all that we are being taught, it's enough for you to get to heaven. And I pray the Lord will help us. We will not deviate from the truth in Jesus' name. The W in the power of conquerors over self. Willingness through entire sanctification. You are willing to do everything the master bids you to do. You are not, you know, giving excuses, struggling, disobeying, or you just surrender. Look at it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. Our time is gone. We'll run up the remaining three and we'll pray. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I read verse 22. It says, abstain from all appearance of what? Of evil. So you have to be dead to human desire. 
appreciation and all the things that they do. The joy and the pleasure of the world and all those. So don't allow yourself to yield to all those things that appear evil. You should abstain by only yielding yourself to live right. Self knows how to argue. Don't argue with the word of God. Surrender yourself to do the will of God. You may win an argument, but you can lose your soul. And so let's take note of that. And E is emblem of acknowledged servanthood. Emblem of acknowledged servanthood. Write it down because of our time. Luke chapter 17, verse 7 to 10. A servant cannot have his way, nor impose his way on the master. So the servant will not arrogate to himself, you know, the right to do things the way he wants. He'll just say, your obedient servant. Whatsoever he saith unto you, what? Do it. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And in the hour of the power of conquerors over self, reproduction of his acceptable sacrifice. Reproduction of Christ's acceptable sacrifice. That means whatever we do, we do it as unto the Lord. Sacrificially. Look at Romans chapter 12 before we pray. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, verse 1, that ye present your bodies, what? A living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and what? And perfect will of God. We'll do perfect will of God. We will not do our own will in Jesus' name. Let's rise up on our feet and commit ourselves to the Lord. Say, Lord, whatever self, whatever damaged self I've done to my life, like a servant that is ready, humbled, I yield myself to you. Lord, purge me today and crucify the self. That anything that is of self, you empty it out of me and fill me with your fullness that I will be like you, more of Christ and none of self. Open your mouth and pray. This is the time to pray. Pray until the Lord purges, purify, and perfect you. Now, by the time you believe in this place, you know you have really prayed. You know you have opened your mouth and you have sought the face of God and the Lord has chiseled and cut off and crushed and conquered and cleansed every symptom of self from our lives. Open your mouth and pray. I know you are praying and God is hearing you. Commit yourself to that. Say, Lord, I need your touch upon my life. I need divine cleansing. This supernatural breakthrough, let it start in my inner man. Let me have the inner breakthrough. All the struggles, enough of struggling. All this self-will, enough of self-centeredness, enough of self-interest, enough of self-seeking, enough of self-serving, enough of self-glory, enough of self-satisfaction. Leave me the way I am. The Bible says we should seek the Lord until he comes and rain righteousness upon us. It is time to seek the Lord. Let's open our mouth and pray. Say, Lord, I cannot continue into a new year with an old man in my heart. With the old man, the old man of self, self-will, self-centeredness, self-projection. This is a year to exalt Christ. It's a year of perfection. And when you project Christ, Christ will be glorified and he's going to perfect your life. We want to pray that, Lord, anywhere self has eaten into my life, self-defense, all forms of self-conceit, deceiving myself. I cannot deceive myself because God knows me. He knows my heart. If you are there, you are a sinner. Don't cover it up with self-conceit. Open it up to God and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Just like the publican did. He did not compare himself with, with the Pharisees that was justifying himself. He humbled himself and said, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. Open up to God. You may be coming to this church for how many years? That doesn't make any record for you in heaven. The only record you can have is for your name to be written in the book of life because you have opened up your heart and repented of your sins. The Bible says if we cover our sins, the Bible says he that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but he that confess and forsake them shall obtain mercy. Open up to God. 
Open up to him. Just pray and say, Lord, I want to be sincere with myself. I want to be sincere with myself. I don't want to deceive myself. I don't want to keep on coming to deeper life and go to hell. I want to be free from every, you know, strong man, every Adamic nature, any old man that is still ruling my life. I don't want self any longer in my life. I reject self. I repent of any influence of self. And acknowledge Christ as the only Savior who should rule my life. And when Christ is all in all, then you'll be sincere. You'll be empty of self. The love of God will fill your heart. And whatever you do, you do it for God's glory. You do it as unto the Lord. And everything about you will be the fullness of Christ in you, the hope of glory. And when that is your motive, the Lord is going to use you. If your motive is to lift up Jesus, he's going to use you. Even when nobody is there or they are there, Christ will just speak to you and said you are the one because your motive is to lift me up and I've read that motive in your heart and let Christ see us within like psalmist prayed God desired the truth in the inward part let the Lord know that your heart is free of self and you are filled with the fullness of Christ none of self all of Christ and when the Lord takes you to that point then your life will be a crucified life you become a conquered servant and the Lord can count on you and he can use you for his own glory. Until then, tarry until the Lord visits you. Let the spiritual breakthrough start from within. And if you are there, you are saved, but you are struggling to overcome the root of sin, the Adamic nature. Surrender your heart. Pray and say, Lord, sanctify my heart. Uproot this Adamic nature and sanctify me. Set me apart for your glory and let my life reproduce Christ. And if you have been serving the Lord, but you can see this kind of competition, kind of comparison, carnality of all you know forms whatever you do you always try to compare yourself with you don't look unto jesus again why not change your orientation and say from today i will look unto jesus everything i do i'll do it as unto the lord when i'm giving opportunity thank god if i'm not giving i will support those that they are giving opportunity to i would not be praying for their downfall i will be supporting them in prayers and be together with one mind one thought, one soul, one feeling, and as a church, we work together, this church will move forward. Let God purge everything that does not glorify him, that we will be whom he wants us to be. In Jesus' name, we pray. Oh, to be like thee. Oh, to be like thee. Blessed Redeemer, pure as the words, come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stem thine own image. Deep on my hold to be like you, hold to be like thee, hold to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as the rest. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stem thine own image deep on my heart. You pray that prayer, that the Lord will empty self out of you. And it will stamp his image deep upon your heart. That you will be like Jesus in all you do. Your motive, the action, everything will be to lift up Jesus. When self is crucified and Christ is glorified, he will draw men unto himself. 
and he will perfect us. Let's bless the name of the Lord because of his visitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we thank you for how you have taken us to the porter's house. And now you have revealed ourselves to us. We've seen ourselves in the mirror of your word. We just pray that you will not leave us until we are whom you want us to be in Jesus' name. Lord, all that you can do by performing a divine surgical operation upon our hearts and remove self and remove the old man and remove that thing that is opposing Christ's full reign and full control over our lives. And Father, empty such things from our lives. And now, Lord, take your place, take your central place in our heart, in the center of our motive, center of our heart, center of our will, and stamp thy own image deep upon our hearts. That as we leave this place, Lord, all that we do will be for your glory in Jesus' name. All that we we'll say will be for God's glory in Jesus' name. All that we put on, the way we relate, the way we think, everything will be for God's glory. And now when we go out from here lifting you up, Lord, you will use us to draw others to you in Jesus' name. And when the trumpet sound, wherever we are, because we are in you and you in us, and we are lifting you up, Christ in us, the hope of glory will be raptured and meet with you in glory in Jesus' name. Pray that as we leave this place, this word, you continue to impress it upon our hearts. And you continue to remind us so that when self wants to dominate, we will surrender and say, nevertheless, not as I will, the will of God be done. Thank you, Lord, because you've answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.